Uh, friends, um, I, I just introduce uh, myself. Uh, I did my graduation from Bits Planning, which is in uh, Rajasthan, same, same US, this state. Um, then I did in chemical engineering. And after that, um, I worked for a couple of years in the software field. Uh, I left it. Then um, I joined uh, management in uh, Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. One month before graduating, uh, I started my own company called Food King. Uh, I started with uh, 2,000 rupees, and today we do a uh, few crores of turnover. And uh, would have mentored more than 300 young entrepreneurs till now. Would have addressed more than 8 lakh students till now. And uh, this is me. But if you see uh, my starting stage, you know, early stage. I was born and brought up in Chennai, in a place called Maripakkam, in a slum over there, uh, in a family with uh, two elder sisters, two younger brothers, and uh, my mom was the sole breadwinner of the family. Uh, Twenty years back, uh, my mom's salary for a day was one rupee, and with that, she has to educate, uh, say, five children, she has to feed five children, and she has to give all the things whatever required for us, all, all five children. But as you know how difficult it is, so what she did is, um, you know, in her free time in the morning, she thought, let, let, you know, she should start something which could, you know, earn some money for the family. So that's how she started a small business just outside our home, a uh, Italy business. I'm sure like lots of people know what's in Italy. It's a South Indian delicacy, right? So she used to cook her, it was just outside our home and myself used to go around the streets, sell those idlis, then come back, then go to school, uh, study there, then come back, go to a evening school, you know, get a free tuition over there, then come back, wait for my mom to cook food, then you know, eat it and you know, this used to be my routine. I was not a really studious student till my UKG or first standard. But if you see whoever is there in this hall or wherever they are in this world, whatever age or whatever gender, whatever, you know, whoever it is, right? You or me, we all need recognition. Is there someone who doesn't need the recognition? Maybe the level varies, right? But everybody needs it. Maybe the class, maybe the college, Maybe in the home or maybe in the society. Okay, he's a guy who wears light color shirt or he's a guy who wears check shirt. She likes, say, Adidas brand or she likes Nike brand or, you know, she likes all, uh, you know, fluorescent color dresses or whatever it is. So we try to get recognition, you know, by doing things which will attract people. For me, when I was in my first standard, I couldn't get recognition by wearing nice dresses to the class or by taking some good different to the class and sharing with my friends, okay, my mom cooked this special food, so, you know, I couldn't do that. Most of the time, I'll be assistant to open my different box in front of my friends because I, I'm not sure what is there in my different box, you know, it might be yesterday's, uh, you know, porridge or something like that. But what happened is in my first standard, accidentally I scored first mark in one of the subject. As you all know in class what happens when, when the answer sheets are given, what happens? Everybody say who got how much mark and who is the you know, topper in this subject and who is the topper in the other subject. And you know, they all uh, check out, right? After checking out, then they come to a conclusion who is the highest total, you know, in this particular thing. So accidentally, I scored first mark in one of the subject. And everybody was pointing fingers, okay, in this subject, he's the first mark guy. And I was like, oh my god, okay. Here's everybody looking at us and pointing fingers at us, right? So it's good. I feel really good. So then I realized, here is one thing, without involvement of anybody else, 
be it my mother, be it the teacher, be it my friends, be it anybody, relatives or who are others. Without anybody's interference, involvement, I could get recognition. Once I went to the school, I could get the recognition. So that came to my mind. So immediately I caught up on it and started scoring first mark in most of the subjects. So from then on, I, I became the first son holder till my 12th. I never left my first position. You know, but the challenges are low. Okay, what happens? In my class, I'm the only one guy who comes from a slum, from a hut. Except me, everybody else comes from a relatively good background. Their parents are well educated, well, you know, earning really good doctors, lawyers, you know, working in government jobs. Everybody comes from a different background. So by end of every month, we got to pay the fees. And the next month, by 10th, the class teacher duty is to say that whoever doesn't pay the fees, please stand outside. You know, in my second standard, I was told by my class teacher, okay, whoever doesn't pay the fees, please stand outside. So I know for sure my mom doesn't pay the fees. So I immediately leave the bag and go outside and stand. And as you all know, in school time, if you are given a punishment, it's a pleasure, right? So you get chance to not listen to the class. And obviously, like, I got a couple of friends who accompanied me, who just came, you know, along with me and just was standing along with me and we were chit-chatting. It was such a pleasure to, you know, chit-chat with my friends without the attention of a teacher. So next month came, I stood for three, four days and the correspondent came and said that, okay, ask your mother to come and meet. So I took my mother, she took permission and, you know, they made me to sit in, inside the class. Again, the next month came, again the teacher said, who well, doesn't pay the fees, please stand out. So I know for sure my mom didn't pay the fees, I lifted the bag and immediately went out. And I just looked around, is there any company for me this time? And I found that two more new friends are there. So, okay. After two, three months, I realized that if I'm going to spend four to five days out, standing out of the class, just like this, what happens to my only recognition? It will go away. So then I told myself, you should not do this. The only recognition you have will go away. You cannot leave that recognition. I just questioned myself. I am being punished here. But did I do some mistake? No. Is it my mother's mistake? No. Is it the teacher's mistake? No. It is nobody's mistake, but I am being punished. I said to myself, you give whatever challenges you give to me, I will not get bowed on because of that. I asked myself, what is important right now? Important is to listen to the class, to check whether you are able to listen to the teacher's words, or whether you are able to see the board properly or not. And what I should do for that? I should not worry about the pain of standing outside the class for three days or four days and taking notes. I should not worry about my friends turning back and commenting on me. Or I should not worry about my schoolmates who are passing down the corridors who doesn't have an idea what is the problem or what is the situation out there. Commenting, why the hell these guys got punishment? Are they mischievous? Are they naughty? Or they did some mistake or something? I should not focus on anything else. I have to focus only on the board and what the teacher says. And I told within myself to my second and third rank holders, friends, you might be happy that I am standing outside, but I challenge you, I come, with, come out very strongly again and I'll score the first mark again. And I did that at practice. <laughs> For three years, it went on like this. At one point of time,
my uh, school uniform like i'm sure like for all of you right every year your parents must be getting how many sets of dresses two or three three sets of dresses for school easily for me i used to get one set of dress for three years and you can understand what happen if somebody gets one set for three years and wash for every second day the dress will be literally in a very you know bad shape right anybody touches it might get torn off and i'll be really scared if somebody some friends want to touch me i'll just avoid you know and, and it used to get torn right and my mother used to get stitch and give it to me so i thought nobody is seeing it i used to keep my bag or notebooks and just hide it right so what happened is one of my english teacher she called me in separately and said your dress is not good condition and my son studying in your class his first standard uniform is much better than this i've just kept it you know washed and kept it in the bureau do you mind wearing that even though it's a very difficult feeling you know there is one proverb in tamil saying that karke nandre karke nandre piche puginam karke nandre which means that you can study even at the cost of begging only for studies i told that inside me 10 times and i i got the dress and wore it for another couple of years as i said i told you used to go to that night night class then come back throughout the day i'll be really hungry my mom used to cook and we used to sit around and eat and once we eat we ask for the second serving and my mom is to give very happily whatever is there she is to give and at the end of the day we lived in a hut right so at the end of the day we used to have a kerosene lamp and my mom you know used to drink lots of water so i thought like she is really fond of water and drinking water and i just took it very lightly then fifth came sixth came seventh during my seventh i happened to see the same thing that my mom was drinking water at the end of the day that time i was little bit mature and realized that it's not because of my mom is fond of water it's just because there is no food in the home she has given all the food to us and she is filling her stomach with water that was an eye opener for me a life on the earth is sacrificing for another's life education will be i told myself i will give whatever possible in my life to my mom to make her better i thought i'll skip school and I'll, i'll just go and work somewhere and help her but my mom didn't allow me so i just asked myself what is the next best way to help her the next best way to help her is go to a good college get good marks in in my school go to the best college in the state get a good job the moment i get my first salary i'll tell my mom that you don't have to work anymore i'll take care of the family and that was there in my mind i kept that as my goal 7th com 8th 9th then 10th till 10th there was no electricity at home I used to study with a kerosene lamp. Except me, everybody else had electricity at home. They had all the facilities. Always, that used to be a challenge, right? Like people used to say, "He's a poor kid," and you know, I, I, they, when, whenever they say, I used to think, "Yeah, I'm a poor kid," right? Very true. So for first four, five years, I thought, but when I was in my first standard, I just question, I just told, "Yes, I'm a poor kid." thank you so much for showing sympathy to me i i used to tell everything within myself i never say it out say only now these days i'm saying it out say but those days i used to say within myself yes i'm a poor kid no problem but the thing is i am poor only in my finances god has given me a chance to be rich in my studies in my habits in my thoughts and i'm rich in that is stand on a road thank you you stand on a road and you see a hut right and you stand on a road and and you see a bungalow right 
There's a heart, there's a bungalow. But you travel 10 kilometers above the earth and see the heart and you see the bungalow. Both are same. Whether you sleep in a hut or you sleep in a bungalow doesn't matter. Whether you get good sleep, that's what matters. So during my 10 for happiness, I said, all my friends are, you know, enjoying, playing, they are, you know, they are doing whatever they want and all facilities, but you don't have, you are born in this family. Can you give up and just start playing like them, being like them? I just asked myself, but suddenly something said to me, don't give up. Just imagine what your friends must be doing. So I immediately went, okay, let me imagine. So I just imagined. So my friends will be, you know, sitting in a room on a table with lights switched on and, you know, like uh, with maybe table lamp or something like that. And the fans will be switched on and they will be studying. And when they study, what are the things they could see? They could see the family pictures hang around the room. They could see some natural sceneries very beautifully. They could see somebody getting into the room, going out of the room. Also, they could see the book because they are studying. And they could hear the facts on too. But me sitting in the heart with a kerosene lamp which gives light for just one foot where my book is placed, what I could see is only my book. So I found that my concentration is much, much, much better than my friends. I said to myself, you were crying for things which you were really not needed. I told myself, in each and every situation there is something positive. Look out for that positive, even 0.01%. Have a goal. With that 0.01%, you just try to accomplish your goal. Never say, give up. Never say, I can't do this. It's just not possible. Never say that. That's what I said to myself. <laughs> After 10th, there was two and a half months leave. 11th, we got to pay a uh, special fees. So, I said, like, what can I do? I said, okay, I know book binding. Let me earn some money and continue my school. So I went to the headmaster and said, if some parents come to you asking for book binding, please refer my name. I was 10th, right? So and I, he, I'm a good, you know, good, uh, re really uh, studious guy. So my headmaster said, okay, I'll help you. But he may not help me like if I'm going to charge the same rate with the other guys who are charging outside. So I told him, if the other guys are charging 12 rupees, I'll charge 10 rupees. So I was charged 10 rupees, I got some 1500 notebooks, I mean books for binding, but I made much more profit per book compared to the other guys. You know how? Because I used to exactly measure the length of the notebooks. If you see your school time, right, like you have three different kinds of notebook, A4, A5 and A3 sizes. What the big guy does is he picks up the bigger size and you know with that he you know cuts the raw materials for all the books. But what I used to do was segregate the notebooks, you know pick up different raw materials for different books. So by that I used to say nearly 20-25% of the raw materials and I made much more profit than them. So I paid the fees for 11th, continued my 11th, then 12th which is very, very, very crucial because I got to get really good marks to get to the best college. But you know what, during 12th, I used to be really thin, really starved because our fees increased but my mom's income never increased to that extent. So what she did is, she reduced the nutrition, whatever is there, she reduced that. So because of that, I used to be really tired and you know, I used to sleep off till 7 o'clock in the morning. So I, I was not able to wake up at all. So it went for a month and uh, during
during September, I mean August end, I told myself, if you are going to just do this, you will not be able to accomplish your goal. If you are not able to take the first step, how come you will reach the last step? It is not possible at all. You can say for, right now you can say that you are going to be a failure. So I told myself. Then I just questioned, what you are doing with your energy? What we do? What we do? What we do with our energy is we play, we talk, we do little bit of works and also study. I told myself, for next six months, I'm not going to play. For next six months, I'm not going to talk more than 10 words a day. Within a week, I spoke less than 50 words a day. Within next week, I spoke less than 10 words a day. Everybody thought, Sharath has become mad. But I know for sure why am I doing this. You know, one of my friends will come and say that, hey, hey dude, like, okay, have you seen this movie? He will ask me like that, okay? And I'll, I'll exactly take that inside my mind and, and I'll think, is this good for your goal? Okay, the answer is no. I'll just nod my head and go ahead. Suddenly some, someone else will come, yeah, one of my close friends must be, he'll say, Cha, have you heard about this girl and that guy, you know? <laughs> and it's just very tempting at that age. And, uh, and it will come to my mind. And, Is this good for your goal? <laughs> no, not at all. Like, okay, hold on for six months. Hold on for six months. I should say myself, hold on for six months. After that, okay. I'll just nod my head. He just want to derail me from my goal. So I'll just nod my head and then go ahead. So somebody will ask, have you read the subject? I'll just ask a question. Is this good for your goal? Is he asking to motivate you or is he asking you to divert you? Mostly people will uh, ask to divert you. And you know to know the competition, how much you have read. And I used to say not much, this much. And I will just, you know, give, uh, not, not even talk. Because if I talk, it will be more than 10 words, right? <laughs> so it went on like that, six months. And whatever energy, time I got, for, you know, without talking, without playing, I spent on my studies. Still, I was not able to wake up the time I wanted, like by 4 o'clock I got to wake up, but I was not able to wake up. Because I am tired. Then I asked, why you are not able to wake up? Because it's really chill and uh, you don't even want to take your toe out of your blanket. And you don't have an alarm, right? So alarm is needed to wake you up and you don't want to disturb your mom too. I just had one wall clock, that's it, in my hub. So then I said, okay, let me not use my blanket for next six months. Let me not use my mat for next six months. Let me not even wear a top, I mean like a shirt for next six months, just a trouser, you know, night pant. I used to wear it and sleep on the floor. Before sleeping, I used to say, you got to wake up early. Thrice, I used to say, and sleep off. What will happen? It will be very cozy, cozy sleep, right? No. By night, 12 o'clock, 12.15, it will be really chill and I will wake up. When everybody else is sleeping, I will wake up. I know for sure all my classmates are sleeping. I will wake up. By night 12.35, I will shift to a different place. Sit with my book. Before starting my preparation, I will say, I will not even get up from this place. Till morning 7 o'clock, I will not even get up from the place and I'll study. Why? If my mom could sacrifice her food for my future, I could sacrifice my sleep for her. And that gave me the energy. I got really good marks and applied for bits. I just had the money for getting an application form. That's it. Applied, 
I got it. I thought I'll join the best college in the state, but I got the best college in the country. So I told my mom, this is the best college. If I go there, I'll get a job for sure. And, and it's, it will be like in lakhs. And my mom was earning only 600 rupees. So when I told her, she said like, okay, I'll make you join there somehow. And she pawned my sister's jewels. She took high interest debt, you know, monthly 10 person and, you know, send me there. When, you know, in my place, if the difference between me and my friends is this much, when I went to Bits, it was this much. You know, on one side, I'll see like a Kerala topper. On the other side, I'll see a Karnataka topper or fifth or fourth or third. You know, all toppers put together in the same place. And the challenge became much worse. So, you know, the first week, we all hospitalized go for treat. And when we go for treat, right, like a couple of guys will pay the bill. Right, it used to come like 1000 rupees, 1500 and my mom used to give only 50 rupees for a month for expenses, right? For that too, for soap and you know, toothpaste and things like that. And when I went and I, I never had that kind of food, you know, in my childhood. So, you know, people, uh, two guys spent and I was so happy. And next time, again, they called for a treat and we went and a couple of more guys spent. Then slowly I realized, at one point of time, I'll be asked to pay. So, that would be a very embarrassing situation. So, I told myself from next time, I'm not going to go and I'm going to skip this. So, I skipped that. And uh, what happens is in this, like I never heard about things, you know, which it go, uh, one guy will say like, Macha, have you heard about this John Grisham, you know, or Sidney Shelton, or uh, Pierce Brosnan, or Pamela Anderson, and you know, like, I used to wonder, I never went to these classes in school. You know, maybe I skipped. I never, I've never known this. Then I thought, okay. Slowly I realized these are foreign authors and you know, for uh, foreign actors and you know, like uh, actresses. So then I realized the way I was brought up and the way they were brought up is totally different. So first two years I used to be a really a recluse and you know, just get stuck to my room. And hardly I had any friends except for one friend who is the best dancer. And at the end of two years, 2000 kilometers away from home, no friends, especially no girlfriends, you know how boring life is. So I thought like I should get uh, a girlfriend very soon, like you know. And we cannot do go the normal process, slow process, which will take another two years and by the time your college life will be over. So then I just looked around, what is the easiest way to get girlfriend? So then uh, found that uh, the dance dancers are the, you know, my best friend, the only friend is a, the best dancer for all time. And I used to choreograph for him in, in my room. So then I found that the dancers are the, you know, easiest way to get girlfriend. So I bought a six foot mirror and, you know, two pots and one Rajasthani amplifier and uh, speakers, put it in the pot. And while sleeping, I used to like listen to Michael Jackson and, you know, sleep. And while waking up, I used to, you know, wake up with Michael Jackson, brushing, everything Michael Jackson. Then slowly I learned dances, then went to dance club. Then after that, I worked in, uh, you know, for those two years, but I worked in my association. I used to work really hard. So that time, at the end of two years, for the third year, a coordinator has to be selected. And everybody said, Shal Babu is the best guy for this. But, you know, I said, no, I, I, I'm not interested. You know, because I didn't work for posts. I work for the pure satisfaction of it. Even though, you know, that is one of the top 10 posts in the campus, you know, you get good advantage in the placement and everything. And all the guys will buy for that post. I, I was telling, no, I'm not interested. And, uh, you know, the reason, because I was not really confident enough to speak in front of at least 10 people in English. My communication was not that good at that point of time. So that's the reason I said no. Then my junior self, Sharath is not going to work as coordinator next year. We are not going to work. So I have to take up the post. And in the same mirror where I practice my dance, I used to practice how I'm going to conduct the next day meeting. So I'll go for the meeting. Initial time just to be really tough. I used to go for the meeting and I'll be fumbling for words. And suddenly I'll not have any words in my stock. 
So suddenly I, I'll put a googly to the you know people, to my batchmates and juniors, that even a stack clock shows right time twice in a day. And everybody will be thinking about that by the time I'll be picking up my words. And you know everybody will be thinking about stack clock, yeah, twice in a day, true. By the time I'll have my time and pick up some words and say, yeah, chemical also will win price this time and I'll finish a meeting. Oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, at the end of those four to five month process, everybody said, Sharan is a good manager, good leader, and you got to be a manager and you got to try for it. I asked him, what is a manager? They said, managers are one who don't have to work, but should make others work. <laughs> and they get paid much more. And quite interesting, right? You don't have to work, but make others work, and you get poor, paid more. So then I asked them which is the best. They said I are the best. And if you go there, you'll get more than a crore package. So I just calculated per month, it comes around uh, 8 lakh, 35,000 rupees. And my mom is earning 600 rupees. If I give 8 lakhs, 35,000 to my mother, she'll faint. And she doesn't know how to spend it also. So I was just wondering, okay, let me take the chance of spending it. Okay, how are we going to spend it? Okay, first month, okay, let me get a car of 4 lakhs, 4 and a half lakhs and say 3 lakhs in the bank account. Okay, second month, again now, you know, you'll get the same money. What will you do with that? Okay, again get a car, a car with 4 lakhs, 4 and a half lakhs and, you know, save another 3 lakhs. Okay, how many months you'll be able to do this? Okay, do it for 7 months because there are 7 days in a week. So, you know, you can park 7 car in the road uh, outside your heart and everybody will be looking, okay, outside of what, seven car? Who's this guy, you know? <laughs> you know, I, I exactly dreamt that. And at the end of seven months, you'll have some 30, 35 lakhs. Within a couple of months, you just change your heart into a big bungalow. You know, this was my dream. And, this, and they said, you will have your lunch in London, have your dinner in New York, and you know, you, you'll be able to take your vacation in Miami Beach and not even in Goa. And I, I thought, okay, Miami Beach, okay, you are with your boxers, uh, your rafter, four girls this side, four girls this side. Oh my God. Then I thought I should become, you know, I should join IAM. So that was the motivation. And at the end of four year, fourth year, you know, I mean, during the fourth year, Bits Planning gives a chance to be, you know, go for training for six months. So I was put up in uh, Dunbar, which was in Ashville, Bihar, right now, Jan Jarkhand, right? So when I went there, when I was preparing for the SCAD exam, I, was, I found that nearly 30% of Indian population is below poverty line, which means that nearly 7.5 crore mothers are similar to my mother. I told, okay, you will be fine if you go to IIM, get a job and do for yourself, your family will be fine. But what about these people who occupy 30% of your country? What is the solution? Are you just going to give a blind eye to that, that they are going empty stomach every day? Or are you going to do something about that? So what is the solution? So that time came my mind, okay, you start a company and give jobs to one lakh people, and those 1 lakh people will take care of their family members, around 5 lakh people. And you find one guy out of 1 crore population like this. If you have 120 guys or 110 guys or 100 guys, all will create 1 crore jobs. And you 100 guys can support how many people? 5 crore people. Which is... 5% of the country's population, only 100 guys. Later on, you find 100 guys, I mean 1000 guys who can each give 10,000 jobs each and you could find 10,000 guys who can each give 1000 jobs and you could find 1 lakh guys who can give 100 jobs and 10 lakh guys who can give 10 jobs. You know, entrepreneurship at all levels of the country, you know, length and breadth of the country, I thought that is a solution. So that time, my dream changed from Miami to a company, starting a company and, you know, growing it. So I, I just, you know, came back and found that, as I said, my mom took lots of debt. So it was around one and a half lakhs. So I took up a job. I told myself, let me repay it. So I took up a software job in Chennai. I repaid all the debts. 
save some money for my mother. I don't want my mother to again go back to job when I was studying in IIM. You know, that, that's all in the plan. So I gave first two times, I couldn't clear. The third time when I was about to open my book, I said, if you're 100% sure that you're going to give your 100% effort, then open the book. Otherwise, do not open the book and strain yourself. I said, I will give my 100%. Then started preparing for CAT. I never wasted time. I was working as well as I was preparing for CAT because this preparation, this dream is not only for me, but lakhs and lakhs of people, right? Okay, how much time? Okay, I'll take 10 minutes more, 5 minutes more. So that's how I gave my test. I thought I'll clear it, but what happened is, uh, the paper got leaked. I told it's not only for you, it's for the entire country. Then I was waiting for the retest. I was down with viral fever, but still I went ahead uh, and, I, I, and I, I gave the test. I, I went to the exam hall and said, nobody died because of viral fever. You will also not die. The maximum that will happen is you might faint. And if you faint, there are people to take care of you. You don't have to take care of that. So I gave the test. I cleared all six IIMs in the first process. Then the interview and the uh, you know, group discussion was there. Again, I was down with viral fever for Ahmedabad and Calcutta. I told myself, viral fever is pretty lucky for you. So you will clear this also. And I cleared all six IIMs, then went to IIM Ahmedabad. Then at the end of two years, I started my company, Food King. I said, it's one life. Why do you want to become you know, Paratha King or Dosa King? become Food King, you know. So, I named my company as Food King and uh, that's how I started it. Lots of challenges, you know, from 2000 to 7 crore turnover, but still I, I did lots of things and in all these five years, only two years, I did my business, rest three years, addressing lots of people, you know, making them entrepreneurs because that is there in my dream, to make as many entrepreneurs as possible. So, I have to do that. And three years back, I contested elections also. Last year also, I contested election from Chennai as an independent young candidate. The first time, I got 2% of the votes. The next time, I got 5% of the votes. So at one point of time, I'll definitely win, I'm, I'm sure. So hopefully, maybe 2014 or 2016. So that's me, and I'll end up my speech over here. I'll take two questions, three questions, I'll take, yeah. Thank you so much for such a patient listening.